We need to celebrate Title IX every year, but especially now on an anniversary like this, because some of the parents and I think some of the kids have no idea what it was like before, because all they know is what they have right now. Women deserve what the men have in terms of we're people just like they are. So I think it's very important that people are reminded of Title IX and what it was like before Title IX. That was huge. And that's one of the things that Susie does such a good job of, introducing coaches or athletes that played back in the day when they didn't have everything that they wanted. I remember Coach brought back one of the first teams here at Michigan State, and they talked about just getting in a van, taping their own ankles. So they were their own athletic trainer, their own bus driver, you know, going to their, their games. And I, they're, the, they're the warriors that fought for us and got this program to where it is. When you honor the people that came before you, that's what life's really all about. And especially in women's sports, when you look back, it's like I'm sitting in a chair with the opportunities that I have because someone else sacrificed for me to have this opportunity for the resources that women have now. So I've always thought it's important to one, bring them back to create that sisterhood. I also think it's important for our girls, especially today, that they need to know there was sacrifice prior to them and the guys that wore the jerseys before them were the ones that really laid it for your opportunities for charter planes and national TV and fans in the crowd and promotion. I mean, all that stuff didn't happen because you got here. It happened because someone else laid it for you. Judd Heathcote and I and Daryl Rogers were hired at the same time. I was teaching here in the Kentwood School System in Grand Rapids, and uh, Dr. Jackson was here doing uh, classes as I was working on my permanent teaching certificate. And I had probably three classes with her three consecutive years, and she just simply called me one day out of, out of nowhere. And I think it was in August because she was on her way to the 1976 Olympics. She called and asked if I'd be interested in coaching women's basketball there. And after I dropped the phone, I said yes, and uh, went down and had an interview, and that's where it all began. I think initially I was scared to death. It was just like, well, I've just come from teaching middle school, and I'm now, I'm now at Michigan State, you know, coaching. I just wanted to make sure that I did what I could to show her that I was a person that needed to be there. And after that, it just became very easy because of the personalities that I recruited. That just made it all the easier. We weren't in the Big Ten Conference, women weren't. When it came to the end of the season, we had uh, state tournaments. So, I mean, it was everybody. All the colleges that were in Michigan were in that, in whether they were Division One or two. And then we went to regionals, which was kind of the Big Ten at that time. The AIW Nationals was 16 teams that went I think we had the first one in Minneapolis, and, and my team, fortunately, was a really good team. I got really lucky with the players that I had. So we were in the national tournament that time with the 16 top teams in the country. When women went from the AIW to the NCAA, it was 1982, I believe. Playing in the Big Ten was really challenging, and, and that's what made it so much fun. And, and I think that's what drew a lot of the better athletes to Big Ten Conference schools. Judd was the men's basketball coach at that time. You'd see them get on their planes and go, and, and we were taking our station wagons home. The irony of it was we were playing the exact same schedule, the same teams, because we were in the Big Ten, traveling to the same places, and yet not being able to, to have the money to eat properly or, you know, or eat, we're eating fast food there at a sit-down dinner. Title IX was such a huge thing. That was the big difference. You know, all of a sudden we had gym time, we had enough basketballs, we had nice uniforms, all of that sort of thing that, that sound kind of picky right now as I say them, but it was huge. Then there were a lot of rule changes that were going on too. The three-point line came into view. Women's basketball went to a smaller basketball because of the weight of the ball and the, the size of women's hands versus men's and that sort of thing. My first couple years we played in the what is now the I Am Circle and we had maybe 10 parents there. 
In my last home game at the Breslin Center, we had over 10,000 for the first time. So that was changing incredibly fast as well. well I really like Coach Karen Langland's style as a coach. She sits on the, on the bench and doesn't get too excited about things, but here you can tell she's got the attention of all of her players and she's just going to tell them go with what we've been doing. I looked up to Karen. She was someone that I confided in, someone that became a mentor for me, someone I admired and looked up to for many years in the business. Um, and certainly when I was a kid trying to get here and, and catch her attention, you know, I feel like I've always chased Karen's approval in some way. I remember Max Ann Reese and uh, Kristen Rasmussen and even Keisha Kelly. I just remember coming to the games and watching them play. And when I was a young little girl, I thought, I want to be like them when I grow up. I was very fortunate to have really good people, women on my team. I mean, and I'm not to say they were all perfect, nor were they all great athletes, but whether they were walk-ons or starters or stars, they were just good people. And the teamwork was incredible from my perspective. Winning the Big Ten means that you've had a really good team, and they were very competitive, very good, and just outstanding young women, who I still am in contact with, whatever, many years later. For as long as she was here, she endured. She endured a lot of things when the women's game really hadn't gotten there yet. And I think myself and, and Joanne really benefited from her struggles and her challenges and what she tried to do here over time. I enjoyed teaching the game more than anything else. And a lot of people would say I liked practices better than games. I keep always going back to the people that I worked with and I worked for, and that was the stuff that really made a big difference. It was a great time to be a woman athlete and to be a woman's coach at that point. In anything you do, whether it's basketball or whatever, any job, to be able to teach women how to be better and whatever it is, and then watch them get into a game situation and perform that way. It had a, a really big impact on my life. <laughs>